We got Reggie at right, top right. Reggie Wright contacted Greg Cadings. Um, Greg Cadings is was the lead uh, investigator. Who probably I'm probably saying this shit wrong. You tell you one <laughs> on that case uh, to where Reg, well, fuck it, Greg. Tell them who you are. <laughs> That's funny. Um, so yeah, um, I was a cop in LA. I ended up working on Tupac and Biggie's murder investigations back in the in the uh, 2000s and then i i left and uh, wrote a book about it called murder rap so yeah i had an opportunity to kind of like dive deep into all of the different you know theories and accusations and you know ideas behind what had happened with both Pac and big and that's it all right so greg uh Reggie sent you a document, um, and I'm looking at that and looking at the names, MS, I'm identifying that as Mark Stevens, DD, I know it's Dale Dog, and they got a name on there called BACK, B-A-C-K, and it has some shit, uh, let me pull this shit up so I know what the fuck I'm talking about, uh, BACK, and it has some shit, says CS. CS2. Now, can you tell the people what my position of in this case? How did Cash Jones, WAC 100, what was, how did I get involved or implemented in this case? With the, okay. with the other box. Okay. So it all started when um, there was an FBI agent who told us that he had an informant that could potentially give us some information about Shrug Knight that, that may help us further our investigation into the murders of Tupac and Biggie. That's where it all started. And so we went and met with this informant and uh, it turned out to be Box. And we sat down, uh, it was like on Melrose or Santa Monica, and he pulled up in his Bentley and we sat down at a Starbucks and started to chop it up. And he gave us this information that led to you. And so we didn't know what was real. What the hell was the information that led to me? Well, the information was that if we looked into you, we might find some things out that would help us maybe get some leverage on Shook. So uh, it was, it was just like that. And so we're like, all right, we didn't know any better. We're like, well, FBI says this guy, you know, is worth listening to. So, so the guy we're talking about that's worth listening to is Stutterbox. All right. So, Greg, before you go any further, how long does a motherfucker got to be, like, working with the FBI before they're calling a guy like you that's investigating the uh, case as serious as you have to say was well, he's a reliable source? Hey, well, hey, that's, Greg, that's, Greg, explain to them the difference, the different level of informants you have, and that answers the question better. The, yeah. The, so there's okay. there's there's a CI, which is a confidential informant. There's a CR a CRI, which is a confidential reliable informant. There's a witness. You know, there's different levels of informants and sources of information, and so you you know. It, as cops, we're just going to listen to everybody. And uh, in time, you prove whether or not they're reliable or not. But you don't just disregard somebody because you haven't proven their reliability. So, you know, I don't know what Box had going on, you know, the whole Main Street thing and all his drama and background going on with that case. I became involved in it later. But at that point in time, they're just saying, hey, you should talk to this guy. He may be able to give you some information that will help with your case. That's it. Hey, Greg, so so could you tell them what level they told you that he was? Was he reliable? Was he a CI? Had he worked in the past for him? Or what if you could tell just a different level that he well, that they represented to you that he was? Yeah, and to be complete, perfectly honest, I don't remember exactly what the – you know, language was or what, uh, you know, qualifications were. It was just like, hey, we have this guy, 
says he can help you guys out. We're working with him on something else. And so, you know, take, give him the time to, to, to hear him out. And that's it. I don't remember if they said he's established as reliable. You you portrayed him as a reliable, meaning that he gave reliable information in the past in the movie. This FYI. Yeah. Well, it's a movie, you know, so, you know, people do what they're going to do to make these stories more entertaining. I'm just okay. telling oh. you that what actually happened. It was your when movie. You Box. Hold on, Reggie. When we got with Box, Box tells you that it's this guy that if you look into him, Mike could give you or lead you to him doing some illegal business with Suge Knight. That was his whole thing. Yes. And that guy let that guy was me. You're right. So where did it go from there? So we said, all right, we'll give this guy, we'll give this information the benefit of the doubt. And we began to kind of look at you and figure, okay, well, the, the claim is that they're doing interstate transportation of narcotics. And so we do what we do in order to determine if there's any truth to that. And so we start investigating you. And as you know, you know, it, it, uh, it runs its course. We don't find anything incriminating or anything to validate the claims that box had made and then what steps know. did you take greg like i like the things happened to me with my my home like y'all really fucking looked into me yeah we did we looked we looked into you we tap you know wiretapped you and started to track your truck and do everything we could to verify whether or not the information that we were receiving was valid and Ultimately, it turned out not to be. Um, we did a search warrant at your house and came up pretty much empty-handed with the exception of some worn-out old gun that I think belonged to your wife's dad or some shit like that. And uh, but that was it. It was, just, it was a, it was a um, ultimately a fucking waste of time. All right, so then um, uh, I then came down to I believe that's the federal headquarters on fucking uh, Wilshire. <clears throat> I think in my representation at the time might have been Jeff Brody, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so I guess the story is when I came down to Wilshire, I came down there to inform and not pick up whatever little items I had or I don't know what the fuck that was, but I know I had to come down to that Wilshire building and I came down with, with my legal, which was Jeff Brody. I guess his whole narrative is I went to the Wilshire building to inform, which I don't know why I would have to inform because I was never subject to any arrests uh, or anything like that. So and you let them know uh, what my trip down to the Wilshire building entailed. Yeah, so I remember that day, and you came down there, and we basically just confronted you on the allegations and, you know, explained to you why we were doing what we were doing, giving you the opportunity, um, you know, with the hopes that you would know something that could help us out. Turned out you really didn't have any information that was beneficial to what we were pursuing. But that was it. You know, we said, hey, you know, here's why we're here. Here's how we got here. And this is all there you know, ultimately is to it, unless you have something you want to tell us, which was essentially nothing. All right. And then in your paperwork, I don't know. How was I referred to? Was I referred to Wack, Cass Jones? They have this back name. I don't know who the fuck back is. I don't know. I know I've never had that moniker. But you know, I don't know. Maybe it was some coded shit. Or how did you recall referring to me through all the paperwork when you guys were like listening in on my wiretaps? So like saying, okay, this is this is whack. This is Cass Jones on the wiretap. What what was I referred to in your? Because uh, I've never looked over that paperwork. Never had a need to. What was I referred to? Well, you would have been identified as a referred to most likely as like a target and like your phone would have been target number or your license plate would have been target whatever 
um, it would have been, you know, clearly um, understandable to anybody reading it that this has something to do with this car, this phone, this person. You know, we wouldn't have referred to you as an informant because you never were. Um, we would have referred to you as a target or a source of, um, uh, not a source of information because you, you weren't even that. So, you know, I'm a little vague on it right now because it's been a while, but you would have been most, you know, we would have referred to you by your name, Cash Jones. We don't usually use monikers under those circumstances, like, like WAC or WAC 100. It would just been, you know, a sure. target. WAC 100, I don't think WAC 100 existed yet. It may WAC not have. No, he wasn't, he wasn't created. I don't know. Uh, all right, well, listen, man, Reggie, I fucking appreciate you. Uh, no this was a guy because I don't like to do all the back and forth about the shit. Um, T, you here? Yes, uh, sir. Mike, I tried to get Lamonte, the guy who had the allegations. T, beast, y'all got any questions? Anything you may feel like you want to ask? I wasn't over there in this room. Uh, um, they said something about you going somewhere to a hundred and some floors. Some... No, that's the federal building that he said I came to with my attorney. Right, right. He addressed that. Uh, Beach, you got any questions? I just seen Ghost come in. He was one of the ones over there. Ghost? No, that's to do. Uh, what is he? Just G H O T? But uh... yeah, G H G H O S T. Well, shit, I don't, I don't hear T. You grab him if he's down there. I really wish one of them was in here, but I can let uh, Greg go. See if he'll come up, because I know Ghost, he really got a thing for me, so he's going to ask some great questions. Yo, Greg, how successful was that movie, man, on Netflix, man? It, it's still one of the top picks I see up there, the uh, Unsolved. You know, they got it pretty much right. It's Hollywood, so they've got to do their thing in order to make it entertaining. So I'm not going to say it's 100% accurate, but as far as the investigation goes and the conclusions of the investigations, it was solid. You know, I, I truly believe, and well, I'll say I know that what we said in the, you know, the, uh, the ultimate explanation for how Pac and Big died, I know that to be the truth. Gotcha. Um, but, hey, Greg, did you ever hear that interview with Biggie's mom where she said she believed ninety-seven percent of the uh, of the information from that uh, yeah, I, yeah, to be I, accurate? Well, I did actually, and in more importantly, that's exactly you know when she, when I met with her and spoke with her, that's what she told me face to face. And so, you know, she's caught in a weird position. You know, she's got. She's just in a, it's a tough position for her to commit to anything. A, because of the amount of money that got spent trying to pursue a false theory. And B, she has to keep things open for her grandkids. Because ultimately, if new information came out that was reliable and provable, her kids could open up that lawsuit. Again. I'm sorry, her grandkids could open up that lawsuit again. So she's in a position where she has to play it strategically um, I think she believes what I had to say was true but she doesn't know in the depths of her heart that it's true and so she's just keeping things open no I think yeah, that, yeah, I think 97 percent is a high percentage though yeah, yeah. I, like I said I'm a hundred percent so it's never gonna go anywhere you know but uh, I I don't um, I don't fault her for doing it the way she's doing it hey uh, i know because I, I i know because i've been contacted by him what do you think is going to happen on the keefe d situation i know we're getting off subject but i think they wait for somebody to come up to ask you a question uh have you can you divulge if you've been contacted recently on that matter i put out a video about on bomb first about two months ago saying that uh, i believe that keefe d is going to be arrested soon I know that detective that's on the case is trying to close the case up. Uh, what's your that's like what's Nevada your now, right? Is that Nevada now, Reggie? Yeah, we're talking about Nevada now. Oh, okay. 
Yeah, so it's on Pox case, on Tupac's case, and so yeah, I got contacted by the current investigator, who's um, apparently going to be retiring soon, and kind of wants to put this whole thing to rest once and for all before he retires. So I spoke with him, and you know, he said he's, you know, uh, his um, his intentions are to try to resolve the whole thing before he leaves, but. Whether that happens or not, we'll see. I mean, you know, there's so many different obstacles to overcome with this shit. Oh, well, listen, man. Uh, yo, T, any of want to come up? I sent uh, money train to invite. Ghost ain't come back. All right, well, shit. Um, they just like to talk here to you, whack. They don't like to. They don't like to get the facts uh, debated. I mean, you they know, like one thing about me. One thing about me, and one thing I remember, Greg said to me when I went down there and, and we closed this shit out with my legal big or my attorney. He said, man, you different from the others. Just keep doing what you're doing. You'll be all right. So, you know, Reggie, uh, I'm a thinker. I work outside the box. I may come from someplace, but that ain't, that ain't, that's just man investigate. How many fucking months did you investigate me, Greg? Nine months, eight months, six months? How, how long was that shit? Jeez, oh, I don't know. It seemed like a long <laughs> time. I I feel like it was at least six months because you know, we were doing we were doing several different investigations that were overlapping. We were doing the whole main street thing with Doe Dog and you know, all the shit going on with Stutterbox and that whole thing at the same time. Like we're literally in the same room listening to the about same about phone. The in charges against the main streets. What's that? You're talking about when he filed the kidnapping charges against those seven eight dudes. From main yeah. Street. So you gotcha. know we were up on Dell's phone and I think some cat named Wood or something like that. And then I I can't remember everybody, but like there's this whole large investigation going on with the main streets, and then we got Keefe D going on, and then we got you going on, and so we're all in this room and just kind of cross referencing everything, trying to figure out what's what. And so I mean there was a we lot going tell them on. They came knocking on my door too. <laughs> and then, of course, Yo, yeah, and then of course the Reggie component to it all. Train. <laughs> yeah, I'm on here. I wasn't in that room over there, but is there any questions or anything you may have heard? This is the lead detective on that case and the documents, even answering questions. Any questions or anything you might have heard over there that you want to ask a question about? No, I was not really listening. Um, I was trying to really get what they were trying to say at the end because I was driving, um, getting me uh, something to eat, but I really didn't get a chance to really hear. Oh, it'll sure. be on the replay. The Greg right here, he's the one uh, unsolved. You see on um, Netflix, the Biggie Tupac thing, um, the book Murder Rap, which is still on um Damn, what's the name of that book thing? Because I downloaded Where is it at, Greg? The book Murder Rap. Where can they find that? I just pulled that off of Amazon. Amazon, Murder Rap, Amazon, author Greg Cadence. Uh, you can go to the chapter called Stutterbox. you see photos of me and all that shit and the whole storyline of me, uh, how um, I got implemented and all that. He breaks that down. He just answered all the questions, this little document I got a hold of, and he breaks down that I would have been identified as a target not a CI or CS or none of that. And my name would have been simply Cass Jones, not whoever this back dude is. So I don't want to hold you, Greg. Hey, Reg, I appreciate you for putting that screen. No also, it was Unsolved as well is where the main information comes out in, in, in the TV show Unsolved, you guys. Yep. Yeah, it's on Netflix. I know you can find it on Netflix. I watch it at least once a month. Um, <laughs> you watch yeah. Netflix once. I don't, I don't think that truck driver <laughs> look like me, man. That truck driver dude, he don't look. Dude. Like me. Oh man, yo, I had nothing to do with the casting of it, Cash. If I'd have, <laughs> if I'd have had something to do with the casting, I would just called you. <laughs> yeah, you love the guy that played you, though. Yo, y'all, y'all at least could have gave K. Slay some promo and put the Straight Stud magazines back there. Oh man. yeah, I guess it could have. <laughs> 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 hey man, I appreciate you, man, taking the yeah. time. Yo, Greg, you you still active or you you retired, right? Oh man, I've been I retired in two thousand and ten. It's been a minute. Oh, oh yeah. shit! I mean, yeah, yeah. Greg, I, Greg, I, 
Greg worked for the Amber Alerts. He the one to go around teach people how to work Amber Alerts and stuff. <laughs> Red, I appreciate you. Greg, I appreciate you, man. All right, uh, okay. I All appreciate right. you. You All know right. how to look. The top right says leave quietly, and then that's how you can leave. Thanks, you know. Greg. Appreciate you guys it. got it. I'll talk to you, man. Be good. All right.